Hi and welcome to the Software PE team. I'm Jonas Lindholm. In this video I will show the basics of setting up an M2M bridge on the DM1X00. What is the M2M functionality supported in the DM1X00? It's a function to be able to tunnel CAN buses over an interlink connection. You can specify which CAN messages, both local and remote, to transfer over the bridge. It requires one DM1X00 that hosts the M2M connection and is the bridge and another interlink enabled device. What can I use the M2M connection for? There are numerous of different applications that would gain from having this M2M function. One example is to connect to a slave machine like this Forester Harvester from a master machine like the Forwarder. This is an old prototype that doesn't use Danfoss components, but it shows a possible application. The forwarder uses its uh, display and joystick in the cabin to control the driverless harvester. In this video, I will show the principle of the M2M bridging by using a simplified example that is an extension of the plus one fundamentals dual path example. I want to demonstrate how to virtually connect to the DM 430 underscore 1 in room 1 to the SC24 in room 2 via the CAM buses. The M2M connection helps bridging these two devices together so both of them have the possibility to send message to each other like they are using the same physical CAM bus zero. Here is a picture of the setup I use in this video. Let's start by setting up the basic connection. I start with the program in the DM1000, set up the display to be a Wi-Fi access point because then it will be more convenient to connect to the DM1000 via plus one service tool that I use in room one. I also set an interlink password to the unit. Default, there is no password. I set the password to ABCD. Then I continue with the DM1200, set it up to be a Wi-Fi client to connect to the DM1000 access point. Now we enter the, for this video, more interesting M2M settings page. First I enable the M2M bridge in the DM1200. I keep the remote EID mode setting to zero to start with. Then we connect to the first found gateway. It's safer to specify the entity identity, EID, of the gateway to connect to. Uh, the EID is similar to the MAC address of the Ethernet device on the DM1000. I add a remote password that matches the interlink password on the gateway to connect, in this case, the DM1000 in room 2. On all filter mask and filter values, I add a zero to the first element of the first value and filter mask. This setting means that all CAN messages on the local and remote CAN bus is transferred over the Wi-Fi link. This is not a recommended setting. A better setting is to allow only transferring the CAN messages that is needed in each side of the Wi-Fi link. If we allow all CAN messages on the bus to be transferred over the Wi-Fi link, like I did by setting it to zero, then the load of the link is unnecessarily hard. But for our initial test, this setting is OK. I keep the remote and local CAN port to zero. That means CAN zero is connected to CAN zero virtually. After compiling and download the DM. 1200 application, we are ready to test the M2M bridge. First we check the M2M status variable. We wait for the status to turn to 4. Then we turn the knob on the breakout box in the room 2. Then we check the DM430 in room 1 to verify that it has the same behavior as the DM430 in room 2. With this introduction, I think you can experiment with the settings to shoot your application. If you need more information or help, please remember to visit our forum, help desk, or visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.